welcome to this Earthship Classroom number two. Today we're going to look at solo gain and I'm going to be explaining the most important principles to understand as simply as I can. So solo gain, when we're talking about Earthships, solar gain is all about the ability of an Earthship to pick up enough sun that can be stored in their very dense tire walls as well as the the berm behind the Earthship. Um, the ability of an Earthship to take in the right amount of solar gain to keep its temperature comfortable um, year round is um, what Earthships are all about. So I'd like to explain solar gain as simply as I can. I've got some great imagery and some 3D um, animations that are using a program called SketchUp. Um, I've been using SketchUp for a month and it's a great program that you can um, put an exact location of a building that you're working on and directly see in 3D the sun and how it enters the building and how the whole dynamics work. Um, so I would like to start, um, I would like to start with uh, a couple of images before we go into these animations. Um, to explain the, the really the basics and the most important things to understand. Uh, and these principles are really why an Earthship is able to stay warm with no additional heating uh, at very cold and even sub-freezing temperatures. Um, the idea with an Earthship is that it is built in such a way that without any uh, extra effort, it is automatically able to pick up the amount of um, solar gain that it needs in the winter and the amount that it needs in the summer in order to, to keep a comfortable climate. And so you can see here at the top and the bottom are two different uh, images. The top is a, a side cut view image of an Earthship. This is the back wall, the roof and the front uh, glazing. In the winter, what we know is that the sun is lower in the sky and in the summer, the sun is higher in the sky. Um, and the way that an Earthship is positioned and um, proportioned is to allow this winter sun to enter deep into the back walls of the Earthship, which is here, is really where we want to get the sun so that these tire walls can absorb the heat. Um, and if we flick to an, another image, it's easier to see that there's this area behind the tire wall, this pink line is insulation and this entire zone, it can be even 10 feet um, of uh, thermal mass here that is additional uh, storage of temperature. So in a very cold winter climate, um, this solar gain will reach these back walls and also uh, additionally get stored in the, the berm at the back there. Um, in the summer, the sun is higher in the sky and it doesn't come through these windows nearly as much and you're going to see this very clearly in the animation very shortly. Um, there is a more of a cooling process happening which I'll talk about in another class but you can see it, see it happening here which is the um, convection cooling system. This is a, an air pipe uh, that's buried deep underground that cools air naturally and hot air escapes through skylights. So that's a cooling system. But uh, today we're more interested in the, um, the solar gain aspect. So solar gain literally means the gain of solar radiation or, or heat from the sun. Um, so if we drop into this um, second image, you can see actually three, um, three images. The last one is what happens to this uh, solar gain in the night. So in the winter, you can see here the sun reaches deep into the building in the daytime and um, in the top image, the buffer zone will um, get the warmest and there, there'll be a good shielding in the living space. What you can see happening uh, at night is that um, this, this solar gain that we've had during the day is stored in this um, very high thermal mass area of the tile wall and the berm. And that 
that heat is radiated and released into the home just naturally through conduction and radiation to keep you warm throughout the night and an earth ship has enough uh, thermal mass here to keep you warm all the way through the night and in fact through many uh, nights if there's not uh, a good amount of sun uh, uh, over the course of a few days there will be uh, enough uh, heat here to keep you warm. I would like to um, show you this animation uh, which is a animation that's done in SketchUp and this is a 3D design of a model I'm working on at the moment. This model is really for very hot climates where it gets a little cold in winter but not freezing and, and the main issue would be keeping cool in summer. So um, you can see here there's a, a what looks like a green blob and what this is is the berm that's reaching right behind the earthship and also around the west side of this house and so the west side in the summer in June is where most of the um, summer sun is coming of course a lot from the south but on long summer days that we have in the north of Europe then we get this additional shielding of the home from this berm. So, so that's worth looking, noting. Um, I would like to run through very slowly so you can com just compare and see even um, in this shot you can see this would be around let's say midday um, at the top you can see how the sun reaches this home in June in the summer and you can compare that to how the sun is hitting at the same time of day in November uh, and the obvious differences here you can see uh, how this, this is very well shaded from the summer sun and at the bottom that, that winter sun is really flooding into the home. So it's really the design of the earthship uh, that's uh, and the orientation of the earthship that's facilitating this natural pickup of solar gain. So if we start Early on in the day, this would be around six o'clock in the morning. Um, as we move in, you can um, notice straight away, of course, as we know in summer, the days start earlier in Northern Europe, at least. Um, and uh, as the sun is rising, we can see already it's a, a good amount of sun coming in. You can see most of it's hitting the top of the roof. Um, and just to say, these highlights are a bit exaggerated on, on these images to make sure that it's really clear. Um, so you can see most of the sun is hitting the roof and the, the windows look fairly dim. And of course, on, in November, it's uh, still dark. Um, so let's move forward to just as both the sun is coming in both the um, scenarios. So again, you can see here uh, good shading and um, beautifully lit up windows and if you look uh, inside of this home which we'll do uh, shortly you will see how, how beautifully the sun in the winter when you really want it this would be a probably a cold November morning where that morning sun is very welcome as opposed to a very warm summer morning where you were um, very happy to have this shading happening in the home and as we move through the day, what you'll see is um, that this is happening throughout the day. At no point in the day in June is the sun really streaming through these windows, whereas virtually all day long there's a really good amount of solar gain happening. And it's very easy to model this using programs like SketchUp, and there's many modeling programs, so they're very useful for for testing your models and um, this is something that was uh, a lot more difficult to do or expensive uh, many years ago but this is some software that anyone can uh, use and it's very effective as you can see um, so as we move through the day you can you can see really how beautifully um, this is all working out and, and now we're at the later part of the day you can see the shadows here indicating the sun is, is over on over at the west side and you can also see um, that it's this berm that's taking the bulk of this solar gain and protecting uh, the, the home from overheating. Um, 
And as sunset approaches, we still have, even at the end of the day, some, some nice sun coming in through the greenhouse windows. So you, you can really get a good sense of, and it's of course a longer day um, in June, it's pitch black in November, it's still plenty of sun in June. Um, so you can really see how just the nature of this building, the way it sits on the ground, the way it stands, and the way it presents itself and reveals itself uh, to the environment, to its environment, is what makes it um, work and what makes it work so effortlessly. We don't have to do anything um, other than build it well to make this home function. Um, and that's one of the big contrasts to most builds or homes that, that there are, uh, which is simply that, um, that regulation of climate, that, that keeping you warm and keeping you cool when needed is something that is usually just resolved by um, putting in these very energy intense energy systems, whether it's um, electrical power, heating or gas heating or even a wood burner all of those require money time or effort um, to keep you comfortable uh, whereas the earthship is able to do that year round with no effort and no moving parts and nothing to maintain um, so it's a very um, powerful process that, that has so many advantages from, from your lifestyle to having no bills, to being comfortable, to sustainability and the, the ability of an earthship to even have a negative carbon footprint because they can be um, you know, sharing their excess solar power with, with a grid if you want uh, without using up or really taking up uh, much energy at all. The real take home points to understand uh, I would say the three points on summary are that it's the design of the earthship, the height of these um, glass greenhouse windows that determine how much sun gets in. And these are the kind of things we play with in different locations around the world. In a location where it does get very cold, there will be additional windows even above the main windows that could allow even more sun in. So these are tweaks that we make, um, but that the overall design of the Earthship are really tailor-made to your location. Um, and that includes the angle of this glass. This glass can be um, perfectly vertical or straight down uh, in some climates, but where it gets very cold uh, is a time where you, you would want to start angling these glass windows and they are angled to the be perpendicular with the sun and that will allow the most amount of sun in. Um, and the other take home point is that the it's the thermal mass combined with the design, the high glass glazing on the front that we don't really see on normal homes, that, that full glazing um, and the depth of the home is designed in such a way that it will pick up the right amount of solar gain year round and radiate that back into the home as and when it's needed through all of the natural processes that, that happen without any uh, need for, for energy or maintenance or anything like that. So I hope you found that very interesting and I hope now you can understand um, when I speak about this design being a biotexture design rather than a um, a visual design, this is what I'm talking about now. It's the, the design for me at this stage is not about what color things are or really what furniture is in a room. The biotech design means that we can look at the, the structure and the performance of this building, uh, where the rooms are placed and where, where the um, berm is and how tall the windows are. So it, it can be um, tricky to appreciate the design until you can see a 3D model. Uh, so I, I thank you for stopping by. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Uh, I love to answer questions and um, I love to learn and 
Um, I also will fully appreciate anyone who understands biotexture if you have anything to add or any facts that you think need fact checking or any mistakes I've made, please let me know. Um, it's important for everybody as well as for me to know. Thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure to teach you in the Earthship Biotexture Lecture Hall. Um, don't forget to subscribe, comment, follow, like, engage, share, cross post or whatever you think is um, appropriate to share this valuable knowledge really. Anyone who's wanting to build and, and live self-sufficiently, you may not want to use all of the principles of biotexture. Some people are, are against tire balls, for example. Um, but nevertheless, you can learn so much from understanding biotexture and apply it to anything that you want to do. So thank you for being here. I wish you well. Have a beautiful day. Uh, this has been Eco Alex uh, coming to you from the interwebs. Have a beautiful day.